Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about what I think is the most powerful and most versatile soft synth ever, Phase Plant from Kilohertz. Full disclosure, I am working with Kilohertz. I put out a preset pack with them, and they also wanted to sponsor a video on my channel, but uh, they haven't told me anything to say or do in this video. I don't think I've even let them know that Phase Plant is my favorite synth plugin ever, but it is. I use it more than anything else. I'm sure if you go back through my videos, you'll see it's shown up more than any other synth since it was released, and I think once you see the stuff I'm gonna show you in this video, you'll agree, it's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> The basic premise of Faceplant is that you can build your own synth. So a lot of synths have fixed architecture, you know, they might have two oscillators, two LFOs, four envelopes, two effects. Faceplant lets you just have as many of those as you want, pretty much as many as your CPU can handle. So in this generator section, you can add as many sound generators as you want. There's also a couple of basic effects in here and uh, some utilities like for mixing and routing your signals. Uh, that goes through three different lanes of effects, so you can have three parallel chains of effects. And then at the bottom, you can add as many modulators as you want, so envelopes, LFOs, random waveforms. This also takes in your MIDI data from a controller. No pressure and velocity, and then again some utilities here for working with modulation signals. You got eight assignable macros plus a mod wheel here and then uh, some general uh, global controls and mixing between the three lanes of effects. Let's add an analog modeled oscillator. You got all your usual waveforms that you'd want. You can sync. You can add up to eight unison voices. So you can really quickly create this nice full sound, but even if that's not enough for you, just add another oscillator. You can even just alt click and it makes an exact copy of what you already have. So let's just do a random variation of the parameters from the previous one. Maybe shift this one an octave down. Maybe that high one's a bit buzzy, so I wanna filter it, but I don't wanna filter the new one we added, so I'm gonna press Control or Command to insert something where my mouse is hovering in between them. I'm gonna put a filter in and filter the top end of the first oscillator. And actually, I kind of like the movement of the cutoff filter there, so why don't I jump down here, give myself an LFO, and then assign it to modulate the cutoff. You can see as soon as I click the modulation assignment, all the possible places that it can be sent to are uh, given this little orange plus sign. And then you just drag the amount of modulation that you want. And you can also drag the opposite way if you wanna invert the signals effect. So you can control the amount there, but you can also control it at the modulation source. And so there's flexibility there depending on what you want to achieve. Like maybe you want to send the same modulation source to a bunch of different destinations, each with their own amount, but you still have a master control over all of those modulations. So let's add another thing for this to modulate in tandem, maybe the sync of the second oscillator. Now, of course, another thing you could do is modulate the modulators. So let's just add another LFO. Let's have that one affect the speed of the first LFO. So you can see when this one's higher, this one's going faster. When this one's lower, this one's going slower. Maybe I want that to happen in sync with my project tempo and maybe a different waveform. Like it'll go from fast to slow and snap back to fast again on beat. And now let's add some effects to this. I'm feeling like distortion would be fun. Oh, it sounds cool the octave up. Now because there are three different lanes of effects, you can have a bit of fun with parallel processing. So for instance, what if I add another output here? We have one going to lane one, which is the distortion. We'll send another to lane two, and let's add a delay here, and then we'll make sure lane one is going out to the master, and then lane two can either go to lane three, which has nothing on it right now, or to the master as well. 
So there we've got the main signal distorted, but the delay a little lighter because it's not affecting the distorted signal, it's affecting the raw oscillators. Oh, what if we added the pitch shifter before the delay, shift it down an octave, up an octave, well, that's fun. I'm gonna save this patch for now. And let's start a new patch. Now that you have the overview of what Phase Plant is like, I just wanna get into the details of how much it offers because I feel like it is a synth that can do anything. So we were using the analog generator before, but you can use noise, different types of noise. I really like this key tracked step noise. Really old school video gamey. There's also this smoother noise. The other two types of sound generators are a sampler and you can load any sample of your own into here as well as a ton of stuff that uh, Faceplant comes with. And then they've got a wavetable oscillator with a huge amount of wavetables that you can choose from. The next thing I want to show you is audio rate modulation because not every soft synth offers this, but uh, let's just add two oscillators. And here, anywhere where you see a green modulation point, that means it's audio rate modulation. So I can have the output of this oscillator modulating these points on the first oscillator or even modulating itself. And audio rate modulation, it can just sound really cool and gnarly. And this does remind me of working with uh, like an analog system where you are able to deal with immediate feedback. You can even cross modulate, so taking the audio out of the first one to modulate the second, even after it's already itself being modulated by the output of the second one. Oh, that's disgusting. Let's uh, envelope that maybe. A few minutes later. So audio rate modulation, a lot of fun, wild tones to be had. So I also just wanna quick fire through a few really well thought out, just quality of life things, stuff that I just think every synthesizer should have that Phase Plant does really well. So first of all, there's an undo and redo right here. So you can step through all your actions in the plugin. And this is helpful because some VSTs don't communicate that well with your actual DAW. And so undoing in your DAW might not have an effect on the synth that you're using. Master pitch, this is so handy and I don't know why more synths don't have it. You can control the pitch of every oscillator at once. That's of course handy for retuning things, which maybe you could handle with other tools in your DAW, but even for something like adding vibrato to a patch. Gonna throw an LFO down there, gonna have its amount controlled by the mod wheel. We'll have the amount start at zero, and then we'll apply that LFO to the master pitch, just a little bit. Gotta speed that up. So now as I'm moving the mod wheel, I'm dialing in how much vibrato I want. This is a really basic thing to patch, but it's more complicated on a lot of synths that don't offer you this master pitch control because you've got to assign every single individual oscillator. One thing I love that you've been seeing throughout the video is that there's great visual feedback everywhere. You know, seeing how the wave shapes are being affected by what you're doing is a really great learning tool if you're just starting out and even if you're more advanced, it's so helpful to just have that and see exactly what's going on. Other great little bits of info that Phase Plant provides, there's a help bar down at the bottom here. So whatever you're hovering over, you can just learn about it right there in the synth. And then also on the bottom right, it shows you how much latency is being added. And maybe if we had a whole bunch of uh, weird effects going, we might start to add some latency. Ah, tape stop only adds 0.1 of a millisecond. Yeah, I guess as you can see, a lot of stuff runs with no latency and it's just certain devices might require a little bit of look ahead to function properly. Let me show you some of my presets. These are all linked in the description. Format filter's pretty fun. 
It's always handy to have a transition laser. Some classic chord stuff. This one is on my track, Monster. Actually on Monster, the main synth lead is also phase plant. Here's a flute patch that I made. You can see there's a ton of random modulators down here. I'm sending those in really small amounts to different pitch controls, as well as this frequency shifter here uh, that's on the delay line, just to add this kind of tapey warble effect. And I'll also point out that when you're looking at a patch that's as big as this, it's really nice that Phase Plant lets you uh, collapse things that you don't need to look at. Like say maybe I wanna see uh, the rate that my LFO is going, but I know I don't need to have all these randoms open because they're just creating random signals. And it just goes back to the layout of Phase Plant being one of its greatest strengths because not only are you building your own synth uh, and choosing only the things that you need, you're also choosing which things are more visible and which controls you wanna surface for being able to tweak when you're creating your music. So it all just adds up to a better experience and better workflow than so many synths where there's just like a huge chunk of screen real estate being taken up by something that you're not even using for your patch. Bell Morph, I really like this one. As you can see, I map out lots of macros, so there's a lot of different sweet spots as you're playing with some of these presets. Oh, dreamy keys, I love this one. I figured out something interesting with the delays that made it really special. Yeah, so it's two keyboard sounds. Uh, they're getting filtered and then chorused or ensembled. But then in parallel, you have a delay effect where it's being filtered first and then has this nice bandpass motion to it. But that filtering isn't affecting the original key sound. And it's just this beautiful movement as the delays drift away. I guess I've also set up some macros here. So my pack with Kilohertz is called Polychrome and it's linked in the description. It contains all the presets you've been hearing, plus a lot more. Uh, it also has some multi-pass presets and I did wanna quickly show you multi-pass because it is another brilliant Kilohertz plugin. Basically, if you've heard of multi-band compression, similar kind of deal, except instead of doing compression on different parts of the frequency spectrum, you can do a ton of different kinds of effects on isolated parts of the frequency spectrum. I feel like this used to be sort of like an advanced producer trick where you would split a signal into lows and highs or maybe lows, mids and highs uh, and process them differently. One common example would be on bass sounds. Sometimes you would take just the lows and leave them as they were, but then put distortion on the highs just to bring out a little bit more harmonics there and grit there without making the lows unwieldy to deal with. And of course it can be finicky to make copies of tracks and EQ them differently to isolate the frequencies and you have to be really precise about it or you might run into phase issues. So Multipass just makes all that a lot simpler. Anyway, that is today's video. Those are all the reasons why Phase Plant has been my go-to synth since it came out. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.